Hi, welcome to TC Music. I'm your host, Lloyd Jordan. Tonight we have a very, very special guest, a guitar virtuoso. His name is Billy LaGlaughlin. How you doing, Billy? Good, good. Glad to have you here. Good to be here. All right, you just came off an extensive tour. You've been touring the colleges. I've been doing college work for probably the last three years, and this year has been busier than, than any. I've gotten to see more of the country than I than I expected to, anyhow. Got all through the South and all through the East Coast and Pacific Northwest. I got to Alaska back in November. It was already winter up there. It was cold. It was cold. Well, let's talk about your technique a little bit. You do finger tapping. Uh-huh. And it, a lot of people don't know what finger tapping is, probably. And if you don't, let's explain it to them. Well, um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with a guitar because you have access to all the strings, you know, unlike a piano where you'd have to get up and, you know, open it and kind of lean in to try to do some crazy things. The acoustic guitar was something I've always played and I, I started to hear some other players that were, you know, uh, expanding on the normal sounds you'd expect to hear out of the guitar. Um, one guy in particular, Michael Hedges, I heard um, after he played at the Ordway, I didn't see him there. I I heard him on on uh, like Cities 97 or something, and and I was amazed because I'd been studying guitar for a while out in California, and there really wasn't anybody who I I couldn't you know sort of figure out or see it in my mind like what they were doing while I heard the music. Except for him, I was just like knocked out because there were there were bass lines happening at the same time. There was all these melodies and. I finally saw a tape of him and realized that what he was doing was, you know, tapping out notes on the fingerboard. And I just was, you know, immediately attracted to that style and I closed myself up in my basement for months, months and months and screwed up all the tunings on my guitar and went after some of those sounds that I had, you know, wanted to create on the guitar but that I couldn't find a way to do it any other way. So that's where it started. All right. Um, <clears throat> you've had really good write-ups in the paper and City Pages and Billboard magazine and um, you've played with quite a few famous people too. Yeah, well I've, I've been lucky. I don't, I don't know if you've read everything that's been written about me if you had. There, there were a couple of, uh, couple of interviews that some people I guess didn't really understand what I was trying to do or couldn't ap necessarily appreciate some of the musical things I was going after because you know as we know there are some critics that are you know keyed into it, like you know if if you're not uh, really thrashing or something then you don't then you're not genuine or whatever and mm -hmm. that's never been my thing I just I love music I love creating it I love finding sounds that are um, a little unusual and so that's kind of the track that I've taken and luckily for me I've been able to uh, you know keep myself going and like I said see a lot of the country and connect with some other players that uh, you know appreciate what I'm doing. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've had a special, WCCO did a special on you too. Yeah, CCO has actually uh, used my, my music is, uh, was used all last year for the Herschel Walker TV show and uh, I'm still waiting to her meet Herschel. I wanna, if, if, if he's back with the Vikes and if he has a show this year, if there's a way for me to do it, I wanna hook up with him and uh, meet him and say hi and suggest that maybe we start on some guitar lessons and hang out or something. I think it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else I would ever, you know, get a chance to talk to, to him, but he's kind of a famous guy. I've always liked who he is, so. Yeah. You're <clears throat> your, your music interest, you like reggae. I, yeah, I listen to a lot of reggae music. I, I guess, you know, if, if you had to pin down one theme that kind of goes through most of my lyrics, it's a, a, a theme of hope or of positivism, and that's not necessarily found in a lot of music. And I, I think sometimes even getting back to this whole critical thing, uh, it's funny, but it seems like people that come out and, and uh, sing about things like that sometimes get, uh, get downplayed, but it's definitely an integral part of what, what I'm all about, and so it shows in my music. And, and Bob Marley was uh, 
another writer who I think focused primarily on, you know, uh, singing to people that, you know, were trying to overcome something, whether it be a racial issue or a political issue or a financial, you know, economic oppression issue. And for me, I've tried to carry that over into into ways like he did where it can apply to anything in your life. You know, if you're trying to get over what you're going through at school or if you're trying to get over the problems you're having with your car, like maybe cr having a car crash or something <laughs> like that, you know, yeah. you can you can apply it because it's basic. It's it's a basic message of, of being trying to stay positive. Okay. Yeah, would you like to play a song for us now? I'd love to. Okay, I'd love the to. first song. Do you, want me to, you want me to set this up real quick? Right. Okay. Uh, this first piece that I'm going to play is, a t is in the tapping style. And it, uh, it was inspired by living, I lived right next to the Santa Monica Freeway for three and a half years. And I mean right next to it, like uh, about 30 feet away from the busiest freeway in the world, really. And uh, this piece is, uh, is uh, a day in the life of the Santa Monica Freeway for solo acoustic guitar. Okay, and the name of the song is Helm's Place. Helm's Place. Okay, Billy LaGlaughlin.
sure. Beautiful song. Really nice. Thanks. Nicely done. Thanks. I have a couple of announcements I'd like to make. Um, the Gear Daddies who've been on the show, our show here, uh, a few times will be on David Letterman, June 5th. Um, so everybody watch that. And also, next month we're having our third year anniversary for TC Music, and the show should be an hour long. And there's a couple people out there hopefully watching I would like to say congratulations to for graduating for, from D.A.R.E. And that's Elijah McNeil and Nicole Kidd. And congratulations to everybody that graduated fifth grade D.A.R.E. And have a good summer. Amen. Yes. All right. Um, you went to UCLA? Um, USC, actually. USC. That, was my, that was my rival school, those Bruins over oh. at UCLA. I was, uh, I was down at USC, um, across town. Okay. And uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, I never, I never planned to go there for any other reason other than just they had a great guitar program. And uh, living in L.A. was uh, moving out there when I was 18, and I didn't know a soul ended up being a pretty big uh, event in my life, you know. Uh, you can grow up pretty fast in a big city like that and it was, it was great for me. I spent five and a half, almost six years out there from 80 to 86. Okay. And how does it feel when you come home? Um, you went to Washburn, so you were a Washburn Miller. <laughs> yeah. And how do your friends treat you now? Well, boy, it's it's been a while since I've been back. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, and I guess everybody knew that I played music and that I loved it, but nobody thought I was crazy enough to to go into it, you know, for a for a living. You know, it's it's a it, it's a pretty long shot, and for me. I guess I settled the question in my mind that if I could, uh, if I could play music and and uh, as my main focus and survive in in other ways, you know, I mean, if you can find some way to to make it through this life, um, that I was going to be a pretty happy guy. And I'm, my life is uh, has really opened up in wonderful ways. I'm getting married this uh, this June, actually less than a month away to a lovely, lovely woman named Lori, who is uh, down at the studio here with me tonight. And uh, so we're going to embark on uh, many new adventures together, All right. many of them musical. She gets to come and travel with me, and so we have a great time. How do your parents accept your stardom? Oh, it's not stardom yet. I mean, they'd, they'd, uh, they'd probably have a few good laughs out of it. Uh, no, they're, they've been more supportive now. Uh, that they see that uh, it's actually a business for me. It's it's. Uh, I I think that there's different ways to approach you know, being a musician and and for me, for whatever reason I mean I, I love music and that's my main concern but I've also had to find a way to survive at it because I, I'm not from a background where you know you can just take five or six years and pursue whatever hobby you want. So. Okay, that looks like we have a phone call. Oh. Hello. Oh, there are. Um, we do have a phone line here, and if you'd like to call in, uh, the number's on the screen there, and um, feel free to call in and ask any questions that you'd like. Um, you have two albums out and CDs. Yep, I do. I do. Uh, I have a. Du it's it's really like a double album concept. I I play a lot of solo guitar like I did just now. But I've also uh, been lucky enough to have a band to be the vehicle for the bigger ideas, you know, the bigger musical ideas that I can't get everything out of the uh, acoustic guitar. So uh, I decided to put out a double, a double album, and one of them is called Inhale Pink, which is on the front of your shirt. And uh, that's all my solo guitar music, and I have another one out called Exhale Blue. These came out about a, a year and a half ago, and I hope within the next year to have another double double release, another solo guitar record, and then another band record, because I've gone creatively in phases, and I'm feeling a pretty creative phase right now. So We do have a phone call. Great. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I'd like to ask him just like two questions. 
Okay, could you speak up a little bit, please? Sure. I'm just wondering how long he's been playing and uh, if he has any advice for up and coming. I, I have all kinds of advice for up and comings, but first, I, I've been playing, uh, I guess, about 14 years, and my major advice for anybody who's, who's uh, playing guitar, uh, I guess I'd have two points. One would be to try to find a teacher that you can really connect with who you feel comfortable going to and, and saying, this is, what I, this is what I want to sound like, and help me get there. And number two, whatever you do, try to find other musicians to play with. Because even a guy like me, who's, who's, I'm playing a solo guitar all by myself, but really, so much of what I've learned is through other people and through playing together in groups. So find some other people that you feel are at your level and get together and play and let the hours disappear, let the days disappear, get into the music and uh, I think a lot of good things will happen. Do you think that'll help enhance my own style then? Absolutely, oh yeah, because you know every, everything that we, we learn, uh, we, we're always picking up a little bit of something from somebody else along the way. And that's not to say that people don't have their own styles, but you know, everything we are is a building process, and if you can include the things that you learn from people you're around, then, you know, you're on your way. All right, thanks. Yep, you bet. Thank you. Okay. It's great, I like the phones. Yeah. The phones are great. If anybody else would like to call, the number's on the screen here, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, who are some of the people that you've played with? Uh, around town. Around town in well, when you're warming up at. Uh, when I first got back to, to Minneapolis, uh, I got into a situation that was a little um, unexpected for myself. I was asked to play in a, a, a band called The Girls that was with CBS for a little while and they were trying to get their contract back. And I, I played over on the north side with a bunch of players who I'd never met before, and it ended up being like the greatest thing for me, having grown up over south, to come over north and really learn a lot about a lot of different things, cultural things about our, our city here too. And uh, I played with uh, a woman named Jermaine Brooks, who is a really fine, fine vocalist, and we are continuing to collaborate on some things. Uh, the late Derek Hughes, uh, Kirk Johnson. Uh, I was lucky enough to play with Kirk for for the last three years solid. He's now dancing and playing side percussion with Prince and uh, some great saxophone players: Scott Fultz, Dave Martin, Brian Gallagher, and and lately Rich Manick, who's a really fine sax player, who plays with the Vikings band, and he's just a great jazz player. Liz Quivenin on keyboards. Kirk's sister Kathleen Johnson is a singer who's been out with me quite a bit. Um, bass players Joel Sales, uh, Enrique Toussaint. These are all people that, if you're in the music scene, you might kind of recognize some of these names. Um, Al Wolovich from the old Sussman Lawrence band. My band is, has opened up to include a lot of different players because um, the nature of the gigs that I have are kind of sporadic throughout the country so I call people who might be free at the time and uh, I've been lucky enough to work with these great players. All right. Jimmy Englund on drums, another guy from Spangalang. You used to currently have a band now. Yeah, I, I have this rotating lineup of people and I'll be down at River Place on June 7th and uh, at you know wh what the lineup will be that night I'm not quite sure yet. I'm still, you know, assembling all these people who have worked with me in the past and we get together and and just let it happen without a lot of rehearsing. It's a real spontaneous thing. Okay. We have another phone call. Great. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, um, my name is John and uh, I am sitting here looking at a CD that I saw a friend of mine gave me about uh, three or two years ago called Billy McLaughlin. <laughs> the and original. I, the original, yeah, and I've enjoyed it quite a bit and I was wondering if the other two inhaled Inhale Pink and Exhale Blue, are they available at most uh, record stores? Or? You know, they're, they're available right now at Applause in St. Paul, but I think we have some information we're going to bring up on the screen so you can find out where to get them. Some of the material from that original disc, I have to warn you, is on these. It's, it's all new recordings, but uh, the first disc I put out was like a demo disc, and it had a mixture of solo music and band music. And 
What I decided to do after a lot of the comments that came into me, I decided to separate them. So I recorded a lot of new uh, band music and many, many new uh, solo guitar numbers that are split up between Inhale Pink and XO Blue. I think you'd really like it. So the uh, the solo is all uh, is the Inhale Pink all solo then? It, yeah, it is. And the XL Blue is with the band. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's interesting though. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was a friend of uh, I don't know if he's still your manager, Kevin. Kevin he, Daly. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin and I are still working together. He's a great guy. Okay, because he gave he just. He had a whole mess of these sitting around, and I said, oh, I'd be interested in checking it out, and I really enjoy it, and I wish you all the best of luck. Well, thanks. You got it for free, I guess. Yep, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, bye. Great. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's a, So um, how do people perceive you, like um, metal, people that are in the heavy metal, do you ever get the conflicts with the heavy metal guys, like, oh, well, Eddie Van Halen did this and did that, and... Or anything like that. you know my my thing is so strange because the music I play is is it falls in the gaps I mean it's it's definitely influenced by a little bit of rock and roll it's definitely influenced by jazz by reggae I, how people perceive me isn't really as important to me as the fact that they might just get a chance to hear what I'm doing and enjoy it and that's the major reason I'm you know pursuing uh, you know, some major labels to get my music out there a little bit more. Okay. Well, it looks like we're going to wrap up the show here. And I appreciate the calls that came in, and I appreciate everybody listening to TC Music and tuning in. And we will be back, and we're going to hear one more song from Billy before we go. Great. It's and called Crazy Love. Crazy Love by Billy McLaughlin.
start another tune with. 